Hello and welcome. This week, we take you to South Sudan, a country endowed with minerals and oil. The nation is positioning itself to be the premium hub for oil exports in Africa. In its latest developments, the country unveiled a new building through Nile Petroleum Corporation. Here now are highlights showcasing the milestones. South Sudan has been conflict-ridden for over 30 years. Civil war had a toll on the country, which is regarded as the third largest oil producing nation in Africa. The formation of a unity transitional government helped quell the warring factions. The country's president, General Salva Kiir Mayardit, is determined to rebuild the nation and turn it into an economic powerhouse in the region. Today, is a very humble day and I must thank the management of the NILPEC and the staff for the efforts they have exerted to complete the building. I thank all the partners of the joint operating companies, JOCs, for their support and cooperation all the way to this day. As you have seen, the building is very good. With oil being the country's main economic backbone, South Sudan is working towards becoming a top oil exporting nation as peace efforts continue to bear fruit. We came out of 21 plus of civil war and obviously we, we share a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of history together. Uh, it's also good to bring to the audience that um, your, you know, your local audience back home that South Sudan is as great as can be, uh, you know, and as peaceful as any other country. Yes, there are problems here and there, but as a, as a corporation, we want to change the narrative. We want to, be, you know, showcase to the African countries that we are the one of the oil producing nation. We are, we are open for investment. We are open for partnership. We are open for, you know, joint ventures with South African companies, especially in different areas. It's mining is one of them, agriculture is another, upstream operation, downstream operation. So this is a very good moment for us to showcase to, um, to all the Africans that we should create our own narrative as South Sudanese. My closing remark would be is to African friends and brothers out there is to look at South Sudan as the next destination for investment. That's number one. We're going to have to look at, at Africa as a unit, not as a fraction of who is doing well, who is not doing well, or not buying into a narrative of somebody who wants to make a project out of a country, rather than someone who wants to provide a solution. And that has been the case of South Sudan. People want to use South Sudan as a project to generate funds for running out certain services. Our new building, uh, I call it a new home for transformation. Um, transformation in the sense that we want to transform the oil sector in this country. And by transforming the oil sector, we have to transform the mindset of our staff to basically be productive, uh, be very uh, effective and efficient in terms of how do we operate as a business. Of course, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things to learn from our counterparts. But the number one um, joy is to have a new home where we can put in place a transformation agenda. Now, what do I need to do and what do I need to achieve? Having a building is one step in the right direction. Uh, the second step is how do I then create a lot of you know, opportunities for partnership in terms of construction of a refinery? 
you know, as I said, South African, South Sudan shares a lot of things in common. You have refineries, but you don't have the oil. We have the oil, but we don't have the refinery. So how do we then collaborate and making sure that we benefit from you, you benefit from us? And that's basically what I said, that we need to create an African solution for African problems. And one of the problems we have is we have to prioritize to have local products in the continent and be able to export to other parts. In my case, this market is not a problem if I have to have a refinery today. I have Kenya is my next door neighbor. Congo is our next door neighbor. We also have uh, Ethiopia, Khartoum, and so forth. So there is a market already. We, with the products such as a HFO, which is a heavy fuel oil, so, you know, South Africa is in a very high demand of that product. And we have one of the best high quality HFO uh, that, with a low content of sulfur. So ultimately, uh, this is an opportunity for me to put a mechanism in place to ensure that refinery becomes a top priority in my new home of transformation. The launch of the multi-million shilling Nile Petroleum Corporation headquarters in Juba was marked with pomp and color. <laughs> South Sudan's president exuded confidence in the investment. We started from the beginning that uh, The Nile fight has now started with this building. I believe it will not be the building alone. And that should not stop from progressing. The new building will serve as a key facility for not only Nile Pet, but for its other subsidiaries. This project it has took us a couple of eight years so far. And of course, the project uh, total cost value and the lifespan uh, add up to 29 million US dollars. Currently, the project lifespan has come to an end and we appreciate the stakeholders who took their time to inject in this project, partners, uh, the leadership, uh, the leadership of His Excellency, uh, General Salfa Kirmayadit, and uh, supervision of our managing director, Engineer Benny Ramor Makain, Board of Directors, and our current chairman, Board of Directors. Uh, we thank everyone who has supported us for this project. Uh, the building is so important to Nalpet and to people of South Sudan. We have been having shelling related to rain, and uh, so far the issue of rain has come to an end. We have our subsidiaries who will also be accommodated in these premises. We have our joint ventures who are also be hosting this building. And, and has part our staff and administration. All will be in this building and it will easy the activities, the rotation, and also management activities will be easy and the functioning of each department will be integrated. Uh, so far, our major NEC program is to embark on refinery. Uh, we have been having my time on a building, but building become history so far. Therefore, the next project is to embark on agriculture, the investment, and also to embark on a refinery, because refinery will be the only way that we can vibrate and the performance will be uplifting into our oil and gas industry. Uh, NALPET has a technical capacity in form of transition. Even our partners like Fortunas who are trying to come out, we have the capacity to take over. And after taking over, 
we will be able to have a vibrant energy sector that is well defined. And that is why it is important for us to have this kind of uh, building, iconic building. We will support even getting a loan to be injected in our uh, activities related to refinery and upstream, downstream and midstream activities. As the country moves forward to secure its place in the global oil producing nations, South Sudan is beaming with potential to increase its oil production from the current 170,000 barrels to about half a million barrels a day. With the, with the expiry of the oil production agreement coming to expiry, of course partners are shrinking back in, in putting more investment. So we need to step in and lead as a national oil company. Because there's no any other way that you could actually increase your production unless you, you put in money as a national oil company, go into projects that enhance production, build capacity that will be able to drive this. So my biggest goal is to, ex to, to reach out to countries like South Africa, for example, Petro SA, reach out to CNPC, reach out to all other global players like Angola, you know, Uganda, uh, Nigeria, uh, you know, and so forth. To be able to borrow and learn from their experiences and try to emulate that in order to improve and enhance oil production. Uh, finally, the, the, the issues that we have in South Sudan oil and gas industry is obviously, you know, we inherited a lot of agreements and, and of course the same contractors from, from the north. So, and the, the facilities and the chemicals and technologies that are used at the moment could not be relevant to the current oil fields. So which means we have to come up with alternative technology that will actually enhance production such as EOR and IOR. And this is where the central focus of Nile Petroleum comes in. On the other hand, we have to work more in venturing to studies. We have companies like Slumberger can actually help us to, to run some studies and that's how we can, you know, move in the direction of becoming an operator one day. NALPED is going to lead. We have to lead as a national oil company in the, in the, in the coming event in June. Uh, the, uh, being the major leader of oil production or the main uh, producing country in East Africa, and number three in Africa, because a lot of people don't know that, that South Sudan is number three largest oil producing country in Africa. And you know, uh, we are going to make sure all our local companies, uh, including my subsidiary, will have to participate act actively to reach out to opportunities that are out there. Already anyone who is interested also to invest in Alpha is very welcome. I have a subsidiary for mining, I've got a subsidiary for agriculture, I've got a subsidiary for energy insurance, and minus all the other opportunities upstream operation. For example, I have a drilling subsidiary that's focusing more on upstream drilling for service rigs, uh, walkover rigs, and drilling rigs. So there's a whole opportunity to be showcased by Nile Petroleum in the upcoming event. Despite regional conflict, South Sudan's promising future remains bright, with vast oil reservoirs positioning it to be a key hub for petroleum products. I'm Abi Agina, and it is bye-bye for now. Until next time.